I'm Robert Cavuto, and today on Metal Rules, we are speaking with Biff Byford of Saxon for the release of their upcoming new album, Hellfire and Damnation, due out January 19th. Welcome, and thank you so much for coming today on the call. Yeah, nice, nice to be there with you. Yeah, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, upcoming New Year. Yeah, same to you, you as well, all your, uh, all your readers, definitely. Thank you. Yeah, the album title and title track, Hellfire and Damnation, is an aggressive song. I could hear the aggression in your voice. Do you think that was your state <laughs> of mind when you were recording it? Well, I think I think the vocal style has to suit the song. You know, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a song about the fight between good and evil uh, that's been going on for you know, thousands and thousands of years. So, yeah, it has to be sung in, uh, you know, in a, in a sort of... Uh, you know, a heavy style. Right. And, you know, it, it's actually a uh, foreboding precursor of, I think the world is heading too, you know? So I think we're, we're still continuing down that path. Well, uh, you know, uh, you know, I do a lot of songs, songs about history and, uh, you know, if, if you look back in history, <laughs> there's always been this struggle between, uh, you know, good and evil, light and dark, you know? Uh, so, I mean, a, a lot of bands do songs just about evil, you know, just about mm -hmm. uh, the devil and the occult and the demons and you know the end of days and Armageddon. I just thought it might be it might be cool to do one uh, about both, really, you know, about the good and the evil right. together, you know. And, and I, I like the aggression that you're bringing to it too. I think that's naturally tied to heavy metal, and it's important to the fans for that that level of aggression to hear it and get it out of their system too, you know. Yeah, I think you have to believe the song when you listen to it. You know, you have to you have to get into the song, and uh, you know the 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 lyric and the melody lends itself to that, so, you know, to that style of singing, really. Yeah, the first two songs too begin with some kick-ass rhythm guitar hooks and a bass hook. Does the songwriting process usually begin with finding a great riff? Uh, I, I mean, yeah, I mean. It, before I start, you know, writing music and uh, sorry, before I start writing lyrics and working on melodies, then I insist that the voice supply me with a fantastic guitar riff, you know, because uh, you know, you, you if you start off with something that's great, then it's only going to get greater. That's Whereas true. if you start something that's a bit sort of, you know, a little bit mediocre, then it's not going to get. It might get great, but it won't get greater. So yeah, I think everybody's aware. You know, when we're writing music, it has to be, uh, you know, going for it, you know. Right. Do you think you guys, I know I know you play bass and I know you, you know how to play guitar. Uh, do you guys sort through yeah. years of stockpiled riffs to come up with a direction for the album? <laughs> or is it more spontaneous and an immediate process when you're working on a project? Well, on this album, it was a bit of a, it was a bit magical, this album, because everything got into place. Uh, at the right time, we were we were sort of writing, you know, just writing uh, occasionally, and then you know, Judas Priest got in touch and said, "Shall we do this uh, arena tour together in the UK?" And uh, we said, "Yeah, that'd be great." And they were and they were like March, but we were like March, and this was like back in sort of June or something. Yeah. So um, we had to really pull something out the bag and. Uh, you know, we had we had Brian Tatler uh, join the band and and took over from Paul. Right. Uh, Paul Quinn will retire from playing, and I just said to him, "Have you got any guitar riffs uh, ha hanging around? You know that you're not using." So he sent me two. He sent me the Help Find Damnation, uh, which was obviously a guitar riff. Then it wasn't really a song. Right. Um, so yeah, we we're very lucky, really, that he that he had some uh, you know a couple of ideas that we could use, and uh, the album came together. Quickly, we only finished it on October the 15th this year. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's fresh off the press. Um, what have you learned yeah. about creative enthusiasm and not getting overwhelmed by the songs, uh, you know, and just enjoying the process throughout the years of Saxon? Well, I, th I think the, the, songwriting, uh, the songwriting side of things is very sort of, uh, you know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of inspiration coming from different people. Yeah. Uh, when we're writing, so uh, we always uh, rehearse as a band. We rehearse through all the songs uh, live, and just uh, you know work out all the little bits and pieces. So when we do, when we do record it, uh, it sounds you know fantastic. Just we just record 
we just played it. So uh, I think that's the thing. But I think you have to treat every song on its own merit, really. Yeah. So I think we we just treat every song as it comes. Uh, we know we know we knew the songs were great because, like I said, we played them live. Um, so yeah, uh, everything else was uh, pretty plain sailing, really. Uh, you know, just just had to get a move on. How many songs did you write for this album? We don't write a lot of songs. We're, we're more into the quality rather than the quantity, I must say. But uh, mm -hmm. I think we probably wrote about. I think we had we had about eleven songs, and then Brian came along with with a few ideas. So um, we were able. There's there's a two or three songs that we didn't record on okay. this album, which is which is quite rare for 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 us because we usually just write uh, for the album. You know, yeah. everything. You know, we'll have ideas, but we don't take them forward and work on them uh, as songs. So, you know, if I don't think that it's going anywhere, then I'll, I'll not uh, write any lyrics for it. That's what makes sense. Um, I know that you typically go to exotic locations, castles, when we've last talked on some of your albums. Uh, was this recorded any place special? Yeah, it was. It, we, we, um, we did it in three or four different places. We did it, we were touring... Uh, we were touring Europe on the festival uh, on the festival circuit. Mm -hmm. um, we had like you know uh, you know Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off, so we were recording it then. Uh, so we we rented a hotel with a cinema attached to it in Germany, and we used that as a base. So uh, we do like uh, you know a show in Greece, a show in Barcelona, in Spain, and then we fly back to Germany, work on the album, and then fly off to like Finland or somewhere and come back and work on the album. So. Uh, it was pretty much uh, most of the drums and bass were done in a cinema. Uh, the guitars were all done in my studio, um, and then the vocals were done in my studio with my son uh, engineering. Mm -hmm. And then we all went to Andy's because Andy Sneak was doing Judas Priest at the time. Right. So he was on. We were only talking to Andy via Zoom. Okay. So uh, he was involved with the recording, but he wasn't there in person. And uh, then uh, we went to Andy's uh, to finish to finish it, basically. And I, I think he mixed it in just over a week. So it was all very sort of, uh, you know, everything fell into place. There was no problems. I think it's good. a powerful album. Yeah, I, I, I love it. I think it's really powerful. I, I think my favorite song that I've been listening to over and over is Madame Guillotine. Because I think there's some <laughs> funny levity in there with Please Don't Lose Your Head. I just, I I, I love hearing that bit of humor injected into a, a song of that. Dark well, it, 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 it's a sort of double entendre. I mean, lose your head could be like, you know, get out of it at a party, you know, get drunk, lose your head. Right. Uh, I like it. It's a little bit. I wanted the chorus to be a little bit like an Alice Cooper part, you know, a little bit more theatrical. I and mean, Alice does that kind of, uh, sometimes that sort of, uh, you know, theatrical sort of double meaning, tongue in cheek type stuff. And, um, you know, I just thought it'd be nice to do that in the chorus, you know. I think uh, it's great. So I think it works really well. I mean, it's a lot of people's favorite that have heard it, you know. That's my definitely my favorite. Did you come up with that bass intro to the song? Because that sets the whole mood of the song, I think. You mean the the the, the slow intro? Yeah. Um, dead, dead, no, dead, no, dead. that was that was um, that was um, Brian's idea. Oh. But um, we put on some uh, backwards guitars and backwards cymbals, and uh, Andy Snip said, I, "I'm going to find the guillotine." <laughs> where, the, where, where the hell are you going to find a guillotine from? <laughs> uh, so he, he found this sound that is a guillotine. I've no no idea where he got it from. Guillotines are us, I suppose. I don't know. But he put on this uh, sound of a guillotine. So that's the last thing you hear before I come in singing. So um, um, yeah, it's pretty it's, cool that beginning. I think. Yeah, I um, love the beginning. I didn't notice the guillotine. I got to go back and listen to that now. That's pretty. I listen to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, how did it feel to go into the studio with Brian replacing Quinn uh, with Paul for the first time? Was it was it a little unusual? Was it you know a little a little strange? Uh, it just circumstances. Um, we just we just circumstances. We just had to get the album out for the tour, basically. Yeah. And uh, you know, as you know, we're touring America as well in uh, April, May, June. So we had to have an album for the tour. Otherwise, it, you know, we just end up playing Greatest Hits again, which is not where where we're coming from. Right. So, um, 
Yeah, it was a bit strange. I mean, uh, Paul did play on the album. He did a couple of things on the album. Oh, that's cool. But he didn't sort of he didn't sort of write the album with us or or do the main the main guitar rhythms were done by Doug and Brian Bessemer. Okay. Yeah, a while ago the press release mentioned that Paul was stepping away from touring. And uh, uh, were you surprised to hear that he's got his band touring the UK with the cards? <laughs> it's a little bit surprising. Yeah. You know, uh, when I do talk to him, I was talking to him yesterday. Well, he's doing his thing, you know. I mean, he said he, said he didn't want to tour anymore. And then he right. went off to Japan with the band, which is <laughs> right, right. a little bit crazy. But, you know, Paul is a little bit crazy. He is a bit, um, he is a bit on, on the... Uh, nicer side of nuts if you know what i mean but that's what makes him uh, that's what makes him great really so yeah um, yeah but we have to stand by his decision and um you know he'd been talking he'd been talking about it for a while you know maybe stepping back right right because uh, it is intense when you're touring at, at high level and it's also intense when uh, people are expecting you to come up with great guitar riffs all the time for the album you know that's quite quite stressful as well so yeah, a little bit odd that he went out on tour when he said he didn't want to tour anymore. But, right. uh, you know, that's Paul, really. Well, yeah, he's a very nice guy. I, I met him and you several times while on tour in the yeah. band. So, yeah, he's a good guy. Um, mm. How is it? Tell me a little bit about working with Brian. I mean, is he coming with ideas that he had from Diamond Head? Did, is he coming? Where is his well, ideas coming from? I think he had, I think he had, um, he had yeah, I mean, he's great, actually, Brian. I mean, he's a legend as well, isn't he? Yes. You know, is is sort of up there with Paul Quinn, I suppose. I mean, especially uh, you know, with Metallica covering some of his songs, yes. uh, is a bit of a is a bit of a riff meister. So I suppose we're replacing one riff meister with another riff meister. So uh, I think that works really well. But it's nice working with him. You know, he's pretty pretty cool guy. You know, and he's got some great um, great ideas that I don't think I don't think Damon had heard the riff of. Uh, Madame Guillotine. I think that was a fairly new riff. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe they they heard the riff that he had for uh, Hellfire Damnation, but you know, I mean, I don't think Diamond Head would have written a song like Hellfire Damnation if you know what I mean. It would have been a different title, different lyrics, different melody. So um, yeah, I mean, it's good working with him. He wants to, um, you know, he, he wants to uh, he wants to write. Great music. I mean, that's what's great about Brian. He really cares about, you know, uh, writing a great song, which is, which is great. You know. Yeah. When we last spoke for more inspirations, I guess last year, um, you you told me that you were going to pick somebody. Obviously, it was Brian. Did you have to audition a lot of people? Was there a long list? Was what was the process well, like you finding him? We had a lot of emails from different people. Some some people in bands that were already going there. But now we 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 knew it was going to be Brian, um, you know Brian. Brian sort of Brian learned some saxophone songs because uh, Paul was ill with COVID, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a a chance that we might miss a, quite a big festival. We didn't want to disappoint everybody, so we asked Brian to learn some of the set. Uh, so Brian, <clears throat> we already knew Brian could master the old songs. You know, right. I mean. Brian writing on the album is a new is a new thing. We didn't really plan on that. It just happened that way. Oh, that sounds great. Um, you you talked about the UK tour. You talked about the US tour. What songs from this album are you looking forward to playing live? Well, I, I think we'll definitely play the first five. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. You know, so uh, I think uh, you know. Uh, you know, Fire and Steel is a great song. Absolutely. Like Guillotine, Somewhere in Roswell. One of that then people yeah. going crazy listening to that song. You know, Somewhere in Ros something in Roswell. So, uh, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I'm a bit of a UFO nut myself. So it, <laughs> it's great to write about uh, conspiracy theories. You know, that's great. Yeah, I, I love that. I love that about your songs. There's always some intrigue and interest in it. Have you ever seen a UFO? We think we have, yeah. We think we saw one in 1981 really? in America, in San Diego. We think we saw one. Wow. Uh, I thought it was a weather balloon. <laughs> <laughs> Still a good story, <laughs> though. That seems to be the big, uh, you know, when everybody ever sees anything, it's always like, no, it was a weather balloon. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> but in a very fast weather balloon, you know, doing about 2,000 miles an hour. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. You know, um, it's been nearly 50 years since the formation of the band. Um, as an artist, do you still think you have something to prove? Because you keep putting out album after album, and they're all equally great. Well, we're always trying to write the perfect song. Mm -hmm. that, that's the thing with us. You know, we're always trying to write the perfect song and, and make the perfect album. So I think that drives us, you know. Uh, I think we're still hungry uh, to... Uh, and, and also as well, a band like ourselves, you know, people are waiting for us to fall, aren't they? You know, yeah. <laughs> people are always waiting for older guys to fail. And then they go, well, you know, they've, you know they used to be great, but, you know, they're... They're sort of laid back now. So we don't want that, you know. It's like we're in we're in your face. That's what we are. No, that's great. Um, you know, my my last question to you is regarding uh your success and the power of what you've done over the last couple of you know, the last years. Do you do you still enjoy it? Is it something you still enjoy? Going out. Yeah, we love it. We, we love it. We love we love we love making albums and we love touring. There's nothing quite like playing your your new album in front of fans mm -hmm. uh, who appreciate it, you know. So it's a really good feeling. I mean, we always play the hits like Denim and Leather and, uh, you know, Princess of the Night and Wheels of Steel. But uh, it's really good. We really get a good kick out of playing, uh, you know, the newer songs and trying to make them sound as good as the old songs, if you know what I mean. I do, I do. Just one, one quick thought. Do you think Saxon has written their uh, Sgt. Pepper, their White Album yet? And if you, if so, which one do you think it is? Uh, I think this one comes quite close. I, I yeah. mean, I can't really fault this album, and I'm a really big critic of myself. Uh, so I think this album is pretty close to to um, to that pinnacle that we're trying to reach. I don't really know if the next one's going to be as good, but... Um, We'll be trying, definitely. But, um, you know, that we've had a lot of albums over the years that have, that have sort of, uh, you know, been a high point in our career. Right. I think America was probably pound the glory was, you know, that was a great period for us in America, Crusader times. But, um, you know, we um, we just feel that, you know, the the new album has, has, has a bit of a life of its own. It's a bit of a monster, the new album. I think it, I think it'll grow on people big time. I think I when you first hear the album, I it's, do. Uh, it, you know, it's got something. You know, it's got something special. I always thought that that Denim and Leather was your he album, your signature album. I think it was the right album at the right time, uh, and it, it brought forth the uh, you know a new generation of bands. And I I look at it that did. great time and great excitement. Still do. Whenever. Yeah, it did. It, it did. You know, it's uh, and also the 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 song sums up what 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 happened in 1980, uh, 1981. You know, in in the UK, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, a lot of a lot of bands, especially American bands, you know, singers, guitarists, drummers, bass players, were watching what was happening in in the UK. You know, this new wave of metal music, right. and uh, you know, they, they wanted that to happen in America for them. And uh, I suppose it did. You know, Metallica took some of our sort of uh, music, influenced them. Obviously, they did, They took some of, uh, you know, uh, Brian's songs, Dominant songs. So we probably did launch, uh, you know, not just Saxon, but Iron Maiden as well. And, you know, Jews Priest, Motorhead. Uh, you know, launched a new wave of, of fans around the world, really. Uh, sorry, a new wave of bands around the world. Uh, that, you know, became really big in, in the sort of middle 60s, middle 80s, I mean, 1986, you know. Yeah, no, I agree. Well, Biff, I want to thank you so much for your time. There's an issue with just... the accounts in your home. The result is everyone should check back there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 I want to thank you, and I wish you a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and I will see you when you come to the United States. I will be there. I always do. I'm always there. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. I think I can tell you that the first show's in, in Fort Lauderdale in Florida. So, uh, so yeah, we're looking forward to it. Um, yeah, keep keep uh, you know keep an eye on our on our uh, social media, and you'll I will. Know straight I'm, away. I'm up yeah. in um, I'm in the New I'm in New Jersey. So uh, when you come to New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, I can hit some of those. Yeah. Up the, um, so yeah. So. That 
I think there's a few shows around there. But, Excellent. Okay, Thank cool. You. Have, Have a great day. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye. Bye.